All right, guys, I am at the very beginning of the Georgia Traverse, and um, we'll see how this goes. I'm planning to try to do the whole route and give you guys tips on how to ride a motorcycle on it. I looked on YouTube and, and I couldn't find much, so I thought I'd do a little video for you and maybe you'll get something out of this. Okay, so your first stop when planning a trip on the Georgia Traverse should be georgiaoverland.com. I'll leave a link in the description. From there, you'll find an overview of the route, an excellent map with waypoints, and instructions on how to download the map and waypoints files. I ended up downloading the free version of Gaia. I don't know if I'm saying that right. I saved um, the map and waypoints files to my phone and then I opened them up in Gaia. If you do this, I recommend playing around with the Gaia app before you go. Two very useful tips to keep in mind with Gaia. If you hit this little button twice to get what looks like two conjoined triangles, your map will adjust based on your location and the location marker. Also keep in mind that when you hit the little I in the waypoints description, this brings up an options window. I found it useful um, to use the driving directions option there. It'll bring up Google Maps and directions to that waypoint. This can come in handy when you're leaving the trail to explore, or get a hotel, go home, or when you're rejoining the trail when you've left for any reason. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mostly I, I just made sure that the, my direction marker was on the colored line indicating the Georgia Traverse route. Keep in mind there will most likely be sections of the Traverse that are closed for some reason or another. Don't worry about it, just get your Maps app out and figure out another route. This came in handy when I, decided, when I decided to skip the first water crossing and did a little backtracking. I also decided to uh, skip the very final section of the traverse because the one unpaved section I was interested in was closed. So by far the jo georgiaoverland.com website is the most essential resource I use out there and I can't recommend it enough so head over there and check it out whoever put that together and whoever's running it is really responsible for making this route I think and it's fantastic so I mentioned the first water crossing earlier this is the only crossing out of the five or so out there that I've felt uncomfortable doing while riding alone and if you drop your bike and it gets waterlogged, this could be a big issue, especially if you're alone. The other ones seem very manageable. I'm not an expert adventure rider um, by any means, and I felt comfortable doing those water crossings. However, I am, you know, riding in the summer and it's pretty dry out, so weather changes and I would say just don't be afraid to backtrack if something seems too crazy. And this brings me to another important topic to consider. How long should you plan to be on the trail? The answer isn't so simple. If you'd like to complete the whole route at once, I would say allow yourself three days of solid riding and two nights in your tent or a hotel. For a more relaxed time that allows for exploring towns and waterfalls, hiking trails, or time in camp, consider doubling that and making a whole week out of the trip. However, if you're like me and you live close, you know, close to the Traverse, um, simply pick a waypoint where you'd like to enter right until you've had enough camp or head home. It's a fantastic route and it, as I like to say it's okay to save some of the candy bar for later. 
This is a very long route that crosses the entire state of Georgia and is filled with fantastic on and off pavement roads. Don't think you have to do the whole thing at once. Just get out there and make it work for you. Let me give you an example of the scale and the time frame using the map. <clears throat> Take a look at the big loop in the northwest corner of the map. I would say it takes me about six hours with very little stopping to complete this loop. Much of the unpaved sections of the Georgia Traverse are done in first, second, and third gear, so keep that in mind and don't be disappointed if you don't quote unquote make progress too quickly. Remember the destination is the ride. Okay, road conditions and bike considerations. For the most part, if you stay on the main route and don't veer off into the single track trails, any adventure bike from a Honda 250 to a BMW 1250 is going to do just fine on the Georgia Traverse. If you go off the main route, be prepared for more hazardous conditions. While looking for a campsite recently, I ended up in a ditch a half mile from the main route on a very muddy trail. And I lucked out big time when this 18 year old kid Connor came by on his 300 Versus and helped tow me out. Thank you, Connor. I got my bike back and there is very limited damage. Reflector gone, little bit of waterproofing gone, otherwise, it looks even better with the mud on it. And I've got mud in my hair. I was very remote and very lucky. So unless you are with friends, unless you're an expert rider with knobby tires and have a light bike, stay on the route. If you stay on the route, I'd say any tire will do just fine but I would recommend something a little more aggressive than what I have. I have 90-10 tires, which are basically meant for the street and a little bit of uh, tra uh, you know, off-road. They do fine, but I'm looking forward to putting something more aggressive on them. You know, keep in mind though that the Georgia Traverse is about 25% on pavement, and my tires do great on those sections. Hopefully the footage here will give you an indication of what to expect. There's packed gravel, loose gravel, some sand, some dirt, and some rocky sections. I'd say tires meant for some unpaved riding and a skid plate are the only two essentials on your bike. Other gear to consider, I'd say plenty of water. <laughs> Some of these sections are very remote. If, if you get stuck out there for some reason, you'll need water. Bring at least a gallon and some kind of water filtration system in case crap really hits the fan. I'll share a link to the one that I carry in the description below. I'll also bring about 4,000 calories when I'm out there. Even if you want to get food at local stores or restaurants, you need to think about what's going to happen if you get stranded. Okay, where to sleep? Camping options are plentiful and excellent. Unless you're familiar with the route and know where you're interested in camping, I'd say don't plan too much. When you're getting tired and are ready to camp, start looking for a campsite or look at the map and the waypoints. Remember, if you're camping at elevation, it can get chilly at night, even when it's July and you've been sweating your nuts off all day. If you want to stay at a hotel, that's, you know, that's always an option. There are plenty of options for you. Okay guys, that's about all I have for you. I hope you got something out of it. Get out there and have fun. I recommend this route to anyone from the beginning adventure rider to the seasoned pro. You can make it as challenging as you want by adding speed, hitting puddles, or going off the beaten path onto single tracks. 
if you got something out of this video please like it and subscribe to my channel and if you have any um, experiences of your own of the Georgia Traverse or if you have questions just uh, comment below and add to the conversation all right thanks for watching